So I was biking down the steep and crumbly road leading down to my dad's house where we arrived at a sexy pedestrian crossing. It was right next to a park, a park that led to Coles, the greatest grocery store in Australia and with arguably the greatest bakery that I've ever seen in this country. We bought chocolate, lollies, baked goods. And I'll tell you what, after me and my friend bought everything that we even like looked at with any level of desire in Coles, we started riding back and we were both so excited because we knew what was coming. Pizza, $20 worth of goods, and pizza. What could be better? So much to consume. Woo! But I'll tell you what, man. By the time we'd finish eating our, you know, cheap takeaway Domino's pizzas, and after I'd gone with my friend to our lolly bag, I guess our lolly, our chocolate, baked good bag, and after I took a bite out of a cookie that we had bought, I had an, I had a realization that the excitement that we had felt for this past whole day together was anticipating the pizza and this cookie because I was damn well full and this cookie made me feel sick. The cookie was nowhere near as good as I had thought it would be. And at this point, the whole bag of lollies and other stuff that we bought, it seemed kind of, it seemed pointless and it, it wasn't appealing anymore. My excitement had proven to ultimately be anticipating how good the cookie and the other stuff would be. The biggest social misconception ever created. It wasn't the actual consumption of any of it. And you know what, to, to touch on this point a bit more, this same friend, fuck it, I love him, love the guy. But we would stay up and eat that bag of lollies and chocolate and goods and stuff anyway. We would stay up late, watch shows, and eat that stuff. And at the time, it, it seemed innocent. We were like 16. Seemed innocent, seemed fun, seemed fine. But it was something we did every weekend, and that was becoming our normal when we hung out. Every weekend, that's 52 times a year. It sticks with you. And some of that shit, my obsession with baked goods now started from that. Every time I walk into Cole's Bakery now, I get so many temptations, so many. It's because it has stuck with me. It was not innocent. It's not something to judge, but the fact that, you know, and I'm, I'm, sure, you, I'm sure you've noticed this and maybe just, maybe you haven't spoken to your friends about this yet, but have you ever realized the fact that the reason we consume is because we don't see the immediate repercussions? Like we don't see the consequences straight away, yet, it impacts us in so many different ways over time. Like, you know, I, I know someone that, that is older and they talk about how you can probably destroy your body throughout your 20s. And if you turn it around at 30, you'll probably be fine and not face that many disadvantages after like drinking heaps and eating shit. And while that might be partially true, you know, I, I was deciding the kind of man I was. That I would just go and yeah, it's fine. It's just 20 bucks, bro. Just just once a week. Meanwhile, you know, I was making it my normal and that, that would impact me years to come. If I continued that for any longer, or if I continue that now, maybe I wouldn't be able to turn it around at the age of 30. Maybe I'd continue those same habits because they are standard in my brain. I perceive them as fine. Giving into your urges and temptations now is not okay. But I mean, you know this and, and you see your friends, you know, indulging in whatever they, they're indulging in. But you know, at least you're hearing this now. You know, these people don't truly understand how much it's conditioning, their actions are conditioning who they are as a person, the habits that they'll demonstrate in the future. Pleasure in anticipation, not in the actual thing. This was point one. Now, once you've heard point three, leave a wow in the comments down below. So point two is a disclaimer, not really, but a disclaimer or a peaky pointer. If the temptation you're facing is quite severe and maybe you've been trying to get over it for a little while or some years, you'll want to focus on the next point, point two, and point seven and eight. The other ones have sort of multiple uses, but are less effective for severe temptations. I'll identify what those points are more clearly in the description. So point two. Now, nearing the end of high school, as I was trying desperately to study for my end of year exams, my end of high school exams, mind you, I told my friend Toby something very secret at the time, considering you clicked on this, I 
may as well share it with you. I told him that I'd been exposed to pornography since the age of 11, and that I'd become, or built, somewhat of an, uh, of an unhealthy obsession with it. It's true. And you know, Toby, as a wise man, the wise man he was, suggested that I discipline myself every time I even think about it, about watching it. You know, I had things to do, I had studying to do at the same time, and I just fucking wouldn't do it. Every time there was something I had to do, you know how it is. And you know, whilst I thought that disciplining myself was a bit of an oversimplification of the problem, on a cold and crispy Monday morning, my eyes watering, I mean, it's pretty cold here in Melbourne, I decided to get dirty, literally. I started every single time I got a temptation to watch something even lewd, L-E-W-D, online, that I would take off my clothes until I was just in my underpants and I would go outside to this particular place outside of my dingy metal entrance gate and I would lay down the dirt it was like mud and I would do five snow angels in my underwear in the dirt to which I would then come inside have a cold shower that was the associative habit yes associative habit something we're going to be talking about a lot in this video. I'm sure you've already heard of Habit Stacks by James Clear. You've probably read the book Atomic Habits, considering yeah, you've dedicated this journey, what one might call self-improvement. But the thing was, since this particular habit with the dirt, half-naked, cold shower, that and the time it took me to do this shit and to think about watching the stuff as well, it was all such a waste of time. And so with the discomfort that came with that associative habit, plus the time wasted, literally just deterred me from even thinking about or opening any new tabs or any incognito windows or any oh i'll just look at this this isn't so bad anything i was deterred from it because you know i'm not sure how much this applies to women but i'm sure it does somewhat but men wouldn't you like to stop being a, a horny man now keep in mind after i'd done this for a couple times this particular associative habit I began thinking of other ways I could punish myself or discipline myself for even thinking about or watching that stuff. I started thinking about not having any coffee the next day and not having anything nice the next day and not even watching any YouTube the next day. But then I realized something and you might know where I'm going with this or you might understand in a second that doing that is not an associative habit. That's not a system. And it would simply be reinforcing the idea that I'm the kind of man who watches porn. So the thing with the dirt and the cold shower is I would associate getting the temptation, you know, with doing that in the same place, in the same way, in the same uniform, and then having the cold shower. It was a system, but any more than that, and I'm, I would be reinforcing the idea that I'm the kind of man I watch porn, which is not what we want. Because I'm, I'm, look, I'm sure, especially if you've read Atomic Habits as well, I'm sure you know this, the whole identity shifting thing. You know, I love the idea of becoming a particular kind of person rather than, looking at everything externally. Maybe we'll have a chat about that on the Discord community or something. But regardless, there is our next point. A change I made in regards to snacking a lot, you know, in my house or scrolling on TikTok between the For You page and the following one where you see your friend's shitty TikToks that they post. I used to be one of them, don't worry. I was like, you know what? No, I'm the kind of man who feels no desire for anything which doesn't develop their character or develops their strength of their mind. Strength of body is fine, but strength of mind is fantastic. I'm not the kind of man that cares about anything that doesn't contribute to those things. But like, you know, Riley Corwell, kind of man who can refuse all urges and temptations effortlessly, and who can pass this capacity onto his friends, his family, and his future children. Fucking with you just the way I want. Thank God for associative habits and point seven and point eight, am I right? So yeah, honestly, associative habits, that can be uncomfortable. So you do things in response to an urge for a temptation. And we're gonna get into this very practically now. The, dis the discomfort, as I described with the dirt and the cold shower and the whole identity thing, two of the most powerful ways to address severe temptations that are hard to resist. But let's delve into an immediate answer that you can use whenever you get a temptation, an urge, when dopamine begins seeping out of your skull. And also an immediate solution to a lack of motivation. Plus, 
Some specific examples on associative habits to use in response to various temptations. So, point number three, using the do something principle to immediately address times where you begin mindlessly doing something, allowing time to slip away, motivation lacking. The thing that blew my mind the day I took action on it, Mark Manson's famous creation. The do something principle is a simple idea that literally just includes you doing something when you begin to realize, oh shit, my face and my phone, I've been here for two hours. You do something like this. And then all of a sudden you start folding clothes. Fucking, you know. Until you actually get back to something productive you're supposed to be doing. A good place to refer to is something called your to-do list. Look, I'm sure you've made to-do lists before, but I'm just reminding you in case you've maybe, you don't know, you forgot maybe how important they are. Remember to start making them at night time again for the next day. Yeah, I assume you used to do that. If you didn't, then, well, even there's a, a, a reason enough for clicking on this video. Make a to-do list every night for the next day. Because you know, the first time I implemented the do something principle about a year ago, actually a month ago, <laughs> to be really honest, I was researching and finalizing another Riley Caldwell video. You know, one of simplicity and practicality. And you know, I was procrastinating and all that, and I just, I just started doing some random shit, and I started cleaning my room. And then I did some other shit, and I think I started dancing with my hips like this. Before sitting back down in my chair and looking at the next thing on my to-do list, and then I did it. I went from procrastinating to doing random shit, which actually led to something productive. Because you know, it's funny, you know, with educating myself, I found a beautiful quote by Mark Manson. Motivation doesn't precede action, it proceeds action. It's basically, it doesn't come beforehand, it comes afterwards. You start when you're unmotivated. Yeah, you know, I'm sure you're also good at connecting things, seeing how puzzle pieces fit together. But you know, maybe that's my why people say, you know, the value is in doing things when you don't feel like it. Maybe that's why they say. You know, I think you and I both know what, you know, well, what comes after this. Another, another thing we can, we can piece together. The do something principle plus associative habits to address temptations and implement other systems in your life as well. Still simple, but more effective. I don't know. You tell me. Point four, I think. Combining associative habits with the do something principle as a part of your dopamine resisting arsenal. Disclaimer though, do this for me as well as yourself. Now listen to this first example carefully because the next point relies on it. Example one, you're scrolling through your phone on TikTok, switching between the for you page and the following one that has your friends crappy TikToks on it. Like a mindless zombie. Sounds somewhat familiar, doesn't it? In this situation, you would do this. Associate realizing that with putting your phone to your chest, and looking up in shock. Associate that with doing the next thing that comes to mind and turning your phone off at the same time. And then associate that with grabbing the nearest object and then holding onto it. Then associate that with pulling out your phone at the same time. Go into your to-do list, assuming that you do make one the night before. If you don't now, it's okay. Start from tonight. You make one in the night time for the next day. I'll make mine probably after this video. And you look at the next thing on your to-do list. This is why you're still holding onto this object. For me, whenever I use something like this, I'm usually just holding onto a wall. And you associate that with it going and doing something, like doing that thing on the to-do list. Example two, whenever you get the urge to go into a fast food place that you see when you're walking down the street, you associate that with beginning to walk towards this place that has food that doesn't actually taste that good and which you know, you'd rather actually eat healthier food, but the things that they put in the food, like chemically trick your mind to thinking that it's satisfying and satiating when it's really not. Anyway, you associate getting that temptation, you associate it with walking towards this store with determination, walking right up to one of its walls. For me, it's always the left side of the store. And you associate this with putting your hand on the wall and putting your hand on your hip. Which you should associate with looking out to the horizon. There's the fast food store behind me. Which you associate with again, pulling out your phone, going to your to-do list, seeing what the next thing is, and then doing it. 
You can do a similar thing to when you feel the urge to snack around in your own home. Example three, vaping. Associate pulling out the vape with ripping a tie off and then putting your other hand above it like you're holding a sword. Associate this with closing your eyes and standing as if you're holding a sword. Then associate that with actually taking a puff of the vape because we're not gonna go full cold turkey. Depending on the severity of, of how much you're obsessed with the vape, it's probably better just to taper off slowly. And then holding it in. You know, associate that with putting the vape away and then pulling out your phone instead, which while holding it in, you'll go to your to-do list, look at the next thing, see it, and then associate seeing that next thing with letting the vape, the smoke out, and putting it, the phone away. You would then associate this with going and doing that next thing on the list. Point five, using negative visualization and amplification to create drive. Now remember that first example about TikTok, for you page, following, like this. Yeah, well now we're getting really funky and we're using that again. Answer me this, what are the real consequences of doing this switch switch Oh, that's my friend. Okay. Oh, destructive. For a couple out for a couple or multiple hours a day without really realizing it and wasting all the time. What are the real consequences? And while craning your neck and feeling unfulfilled, what are the real consequences? Well, how about this? That leads to me being less social and not doing productive things, which hinders me in developing my character. One, because I'm not learning from people by socializing with them. And two, because I'm not practically doing anything that I'm learning real relevant stuff for my path, things that are relevant to my journey in life as Riley Garrett Caldwell. So I'm not developing my character. And that leads to my anxious tendencies, or overthinking tendencies, all that, to worsening or at least not being addressed, which leads to me socializing even less, which leads to me not making as many friends, and just not meeting as many people, which will hinder me in even finding love and will make me feel lonely potentially for the rest of my life, which will completely prevent me from becoming the best version of myself as an individual or different, which will most definitely hinder me from finding a wife and ultimately having children, which will ultimately lead to me not passing on any legacy or any type of worth onto the later generations of humanity, not passing on my lessons to one of my own. Let me imagine it now. And now you can do the same thing for the potential you have for, you know, implementing associative habits, for doing things that the kind of person that you're trying to become would do. They're only simple things after all, not difficult to do. For example, after becoming completely comfortable being myself, and not being anxious to talk to and meet people will lead to me seeking out more people and thus learning from more, pe more people, meeting more people, networking, which will lead to me learning from a wider variety of people with a wider variety of experiences so that I can make less mistakes in the future, which will enhance my capacity to improve as a human being and become more understanding of the universe and to develop into the identity that is important to me quicker. And with meeting all these people will lead to me feeling a better sense of connection with humanity, greater sense of love, which will further contribute to my ability to grow as a person, which will lead to me improving the energy of Riley Caldwell, which will lead to me attracting those who are similar to me, which could definitely lead to me, you know, having a loving wife and a child of my own. Fucking randomized position, man, but and now, how is this relevant to refusing temptations, you might ask? How bright is that on my hand? Anyway. Well, if you, have, if you have not already hit your breaking point, this can help you get there. Or this can help motivate you, especially when coupled with the last point in this video. You know, after, after again, after you've seen the last point in this video, feel free to comment yes in the comments below. Yes. When you have a real reason to do good stuff. Look, I'm, it's, it, I'm not saying it's an instant fix, but it is something that will seriously contribute to the, your long-term capacity to do things that are beneficial and to enjoy that and to slowly recondition yourself to just not give a shit for anything that's just short-term and like, you know, has these little thing, little different, whether it's psychology or it's chemicals and foods that make your brain fucking 
like it in, in ways that are unnatural. So I release, you release so much dopamine and anticipation of it, you know, and then you just, and then and all that. Yeah, it does push you forward. So what are the action steps of this video, my friend? After you've heard the next two points, the last two points, I assume if you're watching up to this point that these three action steps I'll give you in the next few minutes, I assume you'll actually take action on them. But okay, point number six, force accountability into your life by joining the online communities, building a community of your own, attracting mentorship and exploring the world. Step one, actually no, not, not step one, listen. After my three plus years of experience in the psychological arts of reconditioning, I've only recently realized the importance of this point. If you want to change, you need to change your environment. Now that's actually in your control, believe it or not. You know, when I decided that right after high school, or at least not too long after high school, that I would leave home, leave the state, and go live on my own, I realized that that would entail some hardship. That would entail was a new place, new types of people, new cultures, new experiences, new challenges that I'd never faced before. And that was why when I got here, I started Jiu Jitsu, going to a random factory in the middle of nowhere, which is where I trained. I subconsciously knew the power of changing your environment, putting yourself in positions where you are either forced to adapt or to which you meet people that might become mentors of yours or who are doing the same things that you're doing. And you know, the reason I built the Peaky Pines community, you know, I mean, if you're one of the recurring viewers of this channel, you've probably already joined the email list, first link in the description, to which you would have then joined the Discord community, and to which we would have then had one-on-one -on -one calls, group calls and texts. But if you're not a recurring subscriber, and you haven't done that, then go through my funnel, and then we can chat anyway. But you know, it is places like that where yeah, you, you meet people who are doing the same things you're doing and everyone's moving forward together, helping each other, having a good time. My friend Timmy, he went to the military. He was scared. Actually, I don't know if he was scared, but it's the bloody military. It's pretty intense stuff. And he comes back, first three weeks in the military. He comes and we have a call and he tells me something that changed my perspective on reality pretty significantly. He told me that the people he was surrounded by were those that you might see in school, they're confident, they're funny, they don't think about anything really. They just say, they just do. He told me that how the military was structured, he was surrounded by these people. At school, you might be separated if you're quiet like me. Actually, I'm not, I was. <laughs> Let's just not get into that anyway. But now that he was with around them so much, it was they were contagious. Like, he was just absorbing those people around him. And then he began to think less and just say and just do, because he was around 24 seven around them. And we just looked at the importance of not overcomplicating things. You're trying to resist temptations, but you're still, you haven't changed that much of a person. You're still surrounded by people who are indulging, consuming. You have no reason to move forward. You haven't done the amplification. You haven't done the negative visualization, which you imagine all the bad shit or even the good shit as well. And thus, and you know this, I mean, look, you've seen videos about this before, about changing your environment, but you don't know how to do it, do you? You don't understand the power of it. Yeah, now you're thankful you clicked on this video, aren't you? <sighs> Not even done, it's already a gem of a video. What a gift the internet is, am I right? Two people on the opposite side of the world, assuming you're, you might be from the US, Canada, maybe you're from India, some other people are. Three big countries that watch me. It'll be interesting to speak to you and see you know, where you're from, who you are, all that kind of stuff. But you know, th yeah, this is it. This is the power of not overthinking, not thinking too much, being surrounded by people who are doing the things that you're doing, changing your environment however you see fit. I just full left my, I left home, left the state, just boom, did it, left, gone. I did manage to organize a job before I left, but that was because I was taking a lot of action on reaching out for, reaching out to companies. It's fucking possible. You know this. If you struggle with taking action, stick around. At least just on this channel in general, because I'll be talking about that more, especially in the next few weeks. But this is also why I'm involved in online communities of people that are learning stuff about YouTube, about business, things that I'm learning. Because they teach me stuff and I teach them stuff. By leaving the state, going to jujitsu, you know, I consider my jujitsu teacher a bit of a mentor. I've met a couple people on online communities that, you know, they are, you know, they have more money than I have. They are in various ways ahead of me and I'm learning from them, sort of like mentorship. In regards to temptations, being surrounded by people 
who are on this same path as you, and also not being surrounded by people doing all that shit, is way more significant than you think. Which you're smart, maybe. Probably, so I'm sure you understand. And especially as you meet mentors and meet people doing the same things as you. Mate, you don't want to disappoint them. When you've got, you're, inv you're inviting accountability into your own life by doing things like this, changing your environment, I mean. I can't disappoint these people. I can't disappoint my jujitsu teacher. I can't disappoint my family. I've left. May as well be doing something with that time now that I'm not with them. Spending days and now it was a beautiful free time with them. I better be sure I'm not consuming too much. I'm not giving into my urges so carelessly. You know, perhaps we're on the same path. Email community, Discord, DM me. And we can chat. And if that happens, I guess we are on the same path. Now, last point. You're so close. Doesn't the air smell crisper now? Fresher. It does? I agree. So let's finish with the banger. One last point. The long-term solution to temptation indulging. Direction and identity. So I know it's been a long video. I'm partially kidding. I'm sure your attention span is pretty good. But let me leave you with, ironically, the first step to a refusing urges and temptations. Now I discovered this first step as I actually created one of the resources you'll see in the description, the 10 questions to find your purpose. I was creating these to help people find their purpose. And it, yeah, I pretty much did it and then I made the questions. So when I went through those 10 questions, you know, I, I actually used them to figure out kind of where I wanted to go in life roughly and the general direction I wanted to head in. Uh, I used it to figure out what my values in life were and the kind of man I wanted to be. Also the kind of man that would have what I wanted. Doesn't that make sense? You've heard that before as well, haven't you? I hope so. I hope you've been watching the right people. And you know, at this point I, w I was like, damn. And so going through this process of finding out the general direction I wanted to move in, the kind of man I wanted to become, I was like, wow, this, this fucking like, I can't, I actually, have a basis to go off when I'm building systems, you know, from throughout the day. You know, basically it makes life easier. You have to think less, which means you're happy because you're not in your head as much and you're also you're doing stuff for you. You have to, you waste less time because you're not thinking about things. You're just doing the stuff that gets you where you want to go, you know? <laughs> but since we've already touched on identity, I'll save you the time. You know, I'll be generous and I'll touch on the direction thing. When you're on a journey, you have less time to waste. You have more motivation, I guess we'll call it that, to do good stuff and to not consume as much. You know, I'm on my journey and I've even made an accountability thing being a YouTube channel. I have to keep learning every single week that I can post and help people. But on this journey, you know, I, I always have, I never don't have things to do. When you have nothing to do, you finish off work or you finish off, if the final exam and you, know, you don't even work a part-time job, I hope you work a job. You finish off your job, you know, nine to five, finish at 5 p.m., clock off, and you got nothing else to do. You know, what's the next step? Fuck, I tell you what, you go out, you, you know, you go out and get Domino's pizza, you come home, you sit, you watch Netflix till 1 a.m. in the morning, because you know, work isn't even that important, and I have nothing else to do, so I can do this, as I can live this way. I can't do that because of the direction that I'm heading. Again, a couple of these are long-term, but I'll give you the exact action steps now, like that you can take now, in a second, to end the video off. Right, so the step-by-step -step guide to finding your direction is step one, fill out the 10 questions to find your purpose. The only resource I've ever given out until today, I'm gonna to give you a second resource. You're welcome. You're gonna be one of the first people to ever access it. Ever. It's a shame it's not packaged into one great thing, by the way, the 10 questions of the next resource. Wow. Piecing together for you all the step-by-step -step ways, giving you an exact roadmap to become the kind of person that you're proud of in the simplest ways without having to think too much and putting everything in one place. God, what an offer that would be. It's a shame I don't do it yet. But step two after filling those things out is to utilize the next resource the Associative Habits Development Tool. We've touched on Associative Habits. This is the main thing I do in life, is I build systems that I follow on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Unfortunately, it's a separate link in the description. It's gonna be titled. And that'll help you create associative habits to perform in response to various temptations you might have. Like I've got one for pornography and stuff. And how just actually building systems to do other things that you're trying to do. Obviously based on the daily aim of, you know, embodying a particular identity and moving in that direction we spoke about. That'll help you create the associative habits. So there you go, direction, identity, associative habits. Fucking two resources. Fill them out, they're there. And after you fill these two things out, consider this summary to leave us on a really great, positive and simple note. Just kidding, no summary. No summary besides the understanding that dopamine is anticipatory and is not associated with the pleasure, pleasure of the things you're consuming, rather simply anticipating those things. You don't need to have them to get the dopamine. And you know, no summary besides the understanding that the reason you consume so much is because you don't see the repercussions straight away. Which is why that, you know, in this outro with no summary that we understand that we can use negative visualization and amplification to help us really, help our brains really understand the damage that we're doing when we just allow ourselves to look at unnecessary stuff and do unnecessary things without at least trying. I'm sure you know, you're here, you're trying. Good on you. To do the good stuff. No summary besides associative habits, simple systems. You follow them in a particular order. Every time the same order, often the same locations in association with the same activities, getting certain things done in a systematic and repeatable way. No summary besides changing your environment to facilitate change via mentorship, meeting people that know more than you, learning, meeting people that might know different things to you and you learn from them by talking to them. And to facilitate accountability, like this YouTube channel, accountability, like the online communities that I'm a part of, accountability, like moving out right after high school and living alone and doing jujitsu in a random warehouse in the middle of nowhere, accountability. taking accountability for your actions, knowing that if something is not your fault, it doesn't matter. You can learn from it. The other person, if they're not accountable, they will not learn from it, they will not grow. Accountability, giving you a reason not to indulge unnecessarily, not to keep doing this. No summary besides finding a direction and moving and then moving in it, because you have a reason. You have a place to go, you have a basis to, you know, a reason to move forward, a reason to do the right stuff. And no summary besides having identity as a basis to build your systems off because that's what I do. I have systems in order to embody calmness. Now I put a lot of energy into my videos, but I walk around every day breathing. Now I'll probably make a video about breathing, but I don't know. If you want to know more about breathing, maybe I'll tell you about it on a call. We'll see. Building systems to demonstrate honesty, to demonstrate accountability, to demonstrate, to demonstrate confidence. No summary besides any of those things. I usually don't do summaries. What a generous video. What a generous man. What a gem you've come across. I'm glad you're here. I guess you're lucky. One of the lucky ones to have stumbled across this place. Perhaps it's your duty to take action on this and then to help, maybe help your, help your friends. Or maybe not. Maybe just venture on your path. Your path. Your path that doesn't need to match anyone else's. Your path that is yours and yours alone. The path that may involve leaving your friends behind. I don't know. The path that might be due to have a new chapter. A new chapter that might be now. A new chapter that I might be involved in. Perhaps we're on the same picky path. Step one. 10 questions to find your purpose. Step two, associative habits development tool. Step three, take action with all the other knowledge I've given you in this video. You could study this. I try to put some <laughs> bits and bobs in. And if you join the Peggy Pines email community, that's the Discord community. That's cool. Or you might end up in there anyway by downloading those resources. If you're still here, we'll probably talk soon on a call, on a group call, if so. See you soon. How do I get in there again? <laughs>